Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Connection Cafe. This is more yoga's way of connecting us uh, through what was um, through lockdown, lockdown one, and now we're in lockdown two. So my name is Yvonne, Yvonne O'Garro, and I am one of the more yoga teachers, teacher restorative and Hatha yoga. And I was asked in the aftermath of Black Lives Matter, when George Floyd was killed, to hold a space in some way. And I was asked to choose whatever space I felt was appropriate. And I decided to amplify the voices of yogis of color. So I asked the same 10 questions to various yogis of color, some in more yoga, some outside more yoga, but we're all um, yogis. And just to hear the varying journeys. So tonight I have the pleasure of bringing to the more yoga studios not only a yoga teacher and an osteopath but I let her do her intro to Yinka Fabiusui. Hello welcome everyone hello yeah so as Yvonne said I am uh, my name is Yinka Yinka Fabiusui and I'm a yoga teacher and an osteopath or an osteopath and a yoga teacher. Yeah. So which do you and, normally say? <laughs> uh, I usually, I suppose, say osteopath and yoga teacher okay. because that was the order of the qualifications, I suppose. Right, right. okay. Makes and sense. for a, a really long time, it was definitely osteopathy and a bit of yoga right. and now it's expanded it's expanded quite a lot and it's quite a lot of yoga and that's mm -hmm. really good. um so yeah my name is Jika. i'm an osteopath and a yoga teacher and i i would probably struggle the theme that will be ongoing with this interview to tell you what style or tradition of yoga I teach but um, it's not one of the we'll questions don't explore worry explore that a bit later <laughs> um, <laughs> and I uh, teach and practice in South London I am an educator as well so I um, lecture and teach at the University College of Osteopathy also in South London and have been doing that for a few years. And my particular subject area is communication skills and case history taking and uh, clinical um, teaching. Mm. Wow. I'm a parent, um, I own an allotment and I love my allotment. I love, mm. I love getting my hands on the earth and growing things, sometimes successfully, sometimes not so much so, but that doesn't matter. Um, what else can I tell you? Maybe press pause for now. <laughs> That's a nice, lovely little intro. That's my new thing, the 30 second lift pitch. So thank you for that lovely intro. Such a wide and varied career. So are you ready for the yoga journeys question? I am. <laughs> okay, so first one, honouring our ancestors, tell us your family lineage. So my parents are from Nigeria. They are Yoruba. So that is my heritage and lineage of which I wear upon myself today. So, Beautiful, yes, I had noticed. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so my, they're both Southerners, Yoruba people. Uh, my dad, um, getting into the nitty gritty, my dad uh, was from Ekiti and my mum is from Oyo. And so okay. we're Yoruba. Wonderful, thanking you. So when, no, where, when, and with whom was your first yoga class? Well, my first yoga class was very close to where I live, South London. And the story of that class, which uh, I saw, I, I'd forgotten and then I remembered anyway. So I had no interest in yoga whatsoever. Didn't think it had anything to offer me was always slightly fascinated by people during my yoga teacher training who were really bendy and you know did all that stuff and I just thought whatever and I was asked to come to a yoga class with a friend by a friend who said we've got you've got to come there's this teacher in in um 
in in Brixton and you know she's black and we have to go and support her and you, you've got to come along and I just thought oh really so I went with my friend because I wanted to support my friend supporting the teacher I didn't really <laughs> want to do the yoga yeah, yeah, yeah. and I got there and I thought well I know what I'm going to do I'm going to sit in the back I'm going to read a book and they can get on with it and then we can you know and the teacher said and I'm, she's a really good, she's a good, she's a good friend of mine. We're still in contact. And she said, well, um, don't really do spectators. So I politely ask you to come back at the end of the class or join in. And that sort of called my bluff because I thought, okay. So really quite begrudgingly, mm. I did the class. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't really do any of the postures. I found them all quite difficult and challenging. Some of them, I was in them thinking, when is this hell going to end? And when can I move? And at the end of the class, I thought, that was amazing. What, what was that? What, why don't I know about it? My friend went a couple more times and said, it's not for me. Oh, so your friend <laughs> stopped going? Yeah. Oh, wow. OK. Not really for me. She did come back to it a few years later, and that was me hooked. What year was this? I think it was 1993 or four. Wow, 1993. And you yeah. say you were already an osteopath. So yeah. what year did you qualify as an osteopath? 92. 92. Yeah. And how did you get into osteopathy, osteopathy out of interest? Again, my so uh, I, I had I had been interested in uh, what I'd call subjects allied to medicine and considered medicine and considered phys I'd really confused, considered physiotherapy and was on the verge of, of applying. And uh, my cousin, who was about to go to medical school, said, "You're quite quirky and weird. You thought about osteopathy." I own it. That's fine. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. And I thought, never heard of it. Again, okay. never heard of it. Don't, don't know what that is. And I did what I always do or always did in those days. I went to the library. You studied. You researched. And I got a careers book, big tome. And it did happen to be under O. And I looked it up and I thought, you know what? He's right. Really? Tick, 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 tick. So I applied. The rest is history. The rest is history. Amazing. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> so 1993, you begrudgingly go to the yoga class yeah. and you have to put your book away. So yeah. when did you realise you then wanted to teach yoga? How much later was it? Well, this is an ongoing theme now. We're, we're developing. So, of course, I didn't realise I wanted to teach. <laughs> Okay. Until I started to teach. So I, I, it started for me because I, I loved it. And, I, and, it, and it, one of the things that had happened in that very first class I went to, which took me a while to sort of realise is it changed what my head, mm. it, something good happened. And I thought, this is brilliant. And then physical, you know, I started to feel more flexible, mm. you know, all those things that we're probably aware of. And I thought, well, this is, this is like, people should know about this. This is like, I could use this with patients. I can, mm. prescribe, I can, this is, this is a fit. So I thought, well, if somebody thought they could do a bit of osteopathy after my four year degree slog, I would feel a little bit aggrieved. So I thought I'd better go and do a course and learn about this. So I spoke to my uh, yoga teacher and we had, we had, we talked about it a lot over the months. And the thing that popped up from her suggestion was the British wheel training, which appealed to me for various reasons. So um, I applied, got on the course, we'll come back to that maybe a bit later, um, did the course, thought I'll just learn, I want to learn about philosophy and history and how mm -hmm. this all works mm -hmm. and then I'll just take it and integrate it and use it and of course as part of the course, this is the teacher announced that we had to teach. And I said, <laughs> oh. Oh. 
And so I thought, okay, tick the box, do the teaching, do whatever I have to do, get the qualification, move on. And then, of course, that thing happened mm. where I thought, I really quite enjoy teaching. This there you go. Well. So, yeah. yeah, amazing. And, then, and, and I, you know, I, I was very lucky. I was invited to teach at a primary school which uh, my a friend of mine was the deputy head and she said well look come and teach our teachers I know you don't really want to teach but come and come and practice on us come and mm, teach our that's teachers. good mm -hmm. and, you know and there there it began and what year was that the teaching so that must have been 98 okay 98 yeah 98 99 Okay, and roughly, do you remember how many people were on the training? And then the killer question, how many people of colour were on the training? So there were about 12, 12 of us. Oh, that's a smaller numbers. Back yeah, then. Was, this, this is the 90s. Yeah, whereas <laughs> now they're like 30, 35 with each course. of the arc. Yeah, 12. <laughs> Wow. I think so, about 12, okay. and it was uh, in a, we did it a uh, further education college, and yeah, there are about 12, we might have started at 14 or 15, but it came about 12, and uh, it depends on how one other person in the in the in the group would self-describe oh so okay i okay. could say i was the only person of color i could say there were two pe people of color depending on how the other person identified you don't know okay no i but, don't know but i would say there were two people of color out of 12 okay Okay, did you know, and I only found this out very recently, did you know that British Wheel had done a BIPOC only teacher training in 2017? No. Yeah, so this was on the, the back of obviously lower numbers, not going on to teacher training. I've read about it now. They decided to do it, yeah. So the 17 were on that training in 20, 2017, coincidentally. So it's really interesting. I'm trying to do a bit more digging. So yeah, interesting. I should so, do some digging myself now. <laughs> yes, indeed. So moving on to the highs and lows of the yoga, yoga, well, the yoga and the wellness industry, mm -hmm. what comes to mind, starting with lows and ending on highs? I knew, I, I, I found this, this has been rolling around in my head lows there might not be any lows for you, well, you know? there, there are no sort of devastating lows there have been a, a series of micro lows mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like? uh, you know that range from being ridiculed for not being flexible or being okay. made to feel less for not being flexible i'll come back to that to and that i suppose that that's that's uh, so just feeling like i'm looking at all these images and they don't represent me not just in terms of um race diversity color but in terms of physical ability in terms of as a yoga teacher even I am triggered or affected by images that make me feel less. Less than. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and that just carrying on and on and on and come on and on and just mm -hmm. feeling that there isn't a range of abilities that come through. Mm -hmm. I want to see people who aren't quite reaching the floor, yes. who aren't quite extending their shoulder back. Or They've got actually, props all around them. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It, not even just the props. I mean, mm. I love props. Mm. <laughs> you know, 
I went to the, the very last class I went to before this second lockdown, I took an Ikea bag of my own from. <laughs> No, but yeah. I, I, it, it's, it's not just that, it's that even where there aren't images of people using props or not, just seeing people just doing it like a human, mm. <laughs> that sounds odd, but just seeing some vulnerability, seeing some less than able, seeing some, some stiffness and restriction actually, seeing people whose ability matches mine and 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 that i'm still feeling that and and it is beginning to change i recognize and acknowledge that mm -hmm. but in a way the fact that it is beginning to change makes me feel it it, it brings back the it, i suppose it it makes me realize how long that's taken to happen yes and yes. that yeah. It, there still isn't enough of it. I'm greedy now. I want more. I want to see more of it. I want to see it differently. I want to see it. I just want to see it every damn day. You know, I just want mm -hmm. to see it. And so, in some ways, that's been a sort of drip, 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 yeah. drip, drip, yeah. flow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, your highs. So, you said there was a low you wanted to come back to. I, I, ah, yes. So, one of the things that I don't, I only thought about when I was thinking about doing this interview is when I, um, when I applied for the British wheel training, I had to, you did an application, you had to have been doing yoga for, I think teacher trainings have changed, you had to have been doing, practicing yourself for a while, and then you were invited to come and we had to do some sun salutations, and there were about six of us so she obviously did this in rounds mm -hmm. there are about six of us and I remember thinking what are you looking at what yes what, this isn't transparent this is right what, what is this what, mm. what and of course my all my anxieties and I suppose yeah I'm owning that now as an anxiety about mm. not being flexible enough mm. about having restriction and difficulties really got triggered I thought I'll never get on this course I'm gonna get you know that look at her she's 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 this Bendy. She's that. Yeah. 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 I'm just thinking okay that's fried now that's not going to be happening as it happens I did get on the course I still Clearly. don't know what what I don't know what the criteria were I mean I did for the written application mm. I don't know what that was so in a in a way it led to a high because I'm here now and I don't yes. know but it but a it was a bit of a low. It was your audition for the yeah, teacher but training. Yeah, reflectively <laughs> looking mm. back. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so your highs of the wellness industry. Well, the highs are the, the connections I've made through uh, social media, through, like for me, was the... Um, attending the Yoga in Healthcare Alliance conference in 2019 at Westminster University, okay. which I, I, I just loved it. I loved it because it did appeal to, to my slight academic teaching head, because this was a conference where we were talking about research in yoga and people were presenting their research and there was all these ideas bouncing oh, about. Wow. And the thing that I didn't say earlier is that I worked in the NHS for 18 years as an osteopath, oh, wow. which was groundbreaking and fantastic. And I loved it. And um, funding restrictions or lack thereof put an end to that. But it was amazing. And were so you in hospital or practice? Sorry, when so you were in I NHS? In, yeah, I worked in a GP's practice right. as an osteopath. Okay. So, yeah, that happens because, how did that happen? It happens because in the 90s, when um, uh, my area had, in the past, had some social upheaval, shall we say, mm -hmm. um, there was money around, there was a King's Fund report, and it identified 
inner cities needing more money being spent on primary care in order to reduce improve people's health so they wouldn't need secondary care so hospitals right. and secondary yes. care because yes. that's more expensive to deliver and also why should people get to that point and so there was this money and the uh, various practices were invited to apply for whatever they felt their general practice needed for their patients in terms of well, whatever they felt they needed. And this very maverick, now retired GP said to himself, well, I don't see why my patients who don't have big incomes can't have complementary medicine. If it's good mm -hmm. enough for them, good enough for them. So he applied for full-time osteopath, shiatsu, acupuncture. Wow, um, amazing. Funding for... Um, give people advice about benefits, counselling. I am missing something. Radical. I'm missing something. I think very radical. And he, as he did it, he thought, oh, I'll never get it. But hey, oh, I, you know, I've been... And oh, he got it all. Excellent. <laughs> got, all it. So they got funding for full-time osteopathy. And uh, my partner's an osteopath as well, so... Uh, and through connections, because, you know, he knew someone who knew someone who knew mm -hmm. us, said, mm -hmm. you know, what about it? So we both came in and then they said, there you go, up to you, as you wish. So we ran it. I, basically, I ran it as I would run my practice, as I ran, run my practice now. We decided how long we spent with people, how many sessions they got, all of Wonderful. that. It was amazing. Wonderful. Wonderful learned a tremendous amount. So I've always had an interest in healthcare mm. and, and yoga and healthcare and osteopathy and healthcare. And so when I saw that uh, conference, I thought, oh, this will be interesting. Probably, you know, don't know what to expect. And it was amazing. And I met people there and connected with people there and found what I call I found my community or I found another community of practice mm, and I thought, mm. yes, these are my people as well. Right. And so that was amazing. So that was a high. Wonderful. Wonderful. Do you have one ask of the wellness industry? Yeah, stop doing that thing that I was talking about. <laughs> stop doing that. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, that's Great all. <laughs> well, no, there's more, but that's my big. Okay. Stop it. Just stop it. Okay. One Just other. What else do you what what one other ask apart from stop it, which is very key, it's very big. <laughs> um mm. Mm. well, uh and and I suppose treat us as the, I would say, my, my academic head is saying, depending on extent and level of training and, you know, so for those who are able to be considered as healthcare practitioners or along that route and to be respected for that and to be paid accordingly. Right. So enough of, you know, you do a bit of free this. No, you pay me because I'm a professional yeah. and then I will deliver. That's and that's right. how it works. Yes. And I was talking to uh, um, the colleague, I was talking to Donna, and you know, when you open your fridge, <laughs> God, that uh, exposure, I can't drink that. No. I can't eat that. So, no. Oh, I do need money to yeah. put stuff in my in fridge. the fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I think pay us and treat us properly, yeah. and um, that'll be great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. What got you through? I have to change my question now. What got you for the first lockdown? And how is this lockdown 
feeling compared to the first lockdown? So what got me through the first lockdown was uh, family and friends, yoga, food, <laughs> um, food, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, probably in a nutshell, and work actually, and work. <laughs> um, I was, we, we, the University College of Osteopathy, continued you know sort of like I don't even I didn't know what zoom was um nobody March, did at the beginning of March so we we were delivering lectures online we were trying to make it working with cases trying to give them some clinical input and actually I was very grateful to have that and to have to carry on to get the students who needed to graduate to get them through so I was working up until June still teaching and so that was really good because by the time the lockdown was eased and the weather was better well the weather was quite good anyway um so I I, I, I was quite busy actually so that, mm. that that kept me going that was good okay and the current lockdown yes current lockdown um same thing really the same thing and also I, I kind of knew what to expect so yes. I was sort of battle yeah. ready yes <laughs> yeah you. yeah I think that's probably been helpful the yeah. fact that it's not an unknown this yeah. time around and also it, it, there's a time limit to it that, that oh, we hope um that it, it that, that there's an end point in sight and I I suppose I was able to prepare because what what did play on my mind was oh god you know less less daylight hours and mm, the mood, yeah. you know what happens to our brain with with less daylight and that kind of thing so I, and and so because i knew that i've made more efforts to to go out and to you know even if it's a bit ish the weather to mm. just go out and get some air because i work from home i teach from home and i'm and now we're back in this everything is from home from okay. this room in fact so it can get a bit lovely painting behind you. Thank you. Done by a friend in homage to Frank Bowling. It's called Cosmic Bowling. Beautiful. By Lila. <laughs> so moving on to George Floyd, rest in peace. Do you recall if you had many additional followers as people diversified their feeds? Did you? Notice an increase. Had a trickle. A trickle. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and did any studios approach you to come and work for them or any institution? So obviously you're not purely a yoga teacher. Did you find you were approached to do more lecturing or any kind of approaches from a business diversification sense? Not really, no. No, okay. Not really. Possibly more, a bit more diversity in what I was already doing. Right. What, on, if you can call it that. I mean, and that's a bit of a stretch, to be fair. I was already okay. involved. But no. Okay, okay. So here's where you have the opportunity to promote anything that you'd like to promote, anything coming up. You know, what's the rest of 2020 looking like for you as we head into 2021? Well, with a little sliver of 2020 left. Very a sliver <laughs> indeed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so next weekend, I am. Um, so one of the things that so it's taken a long time, but going back to what I said at the beginning of wanting to use yoga in osteopathy got there and so I've developed a two day uh, CPD, continuing professional development course for musculoskeletal therapists. So for osteopaths, chiropractors, physiotherapists, sports massage therapists, people of that ill mm -hmm. who want to find out how yoga can inform their practice. Mm. And so I'm calling it and I'm, I'm at the moment, we're working on low back pain because that's um, 
epidemic, I shouldn't use that word epidemic. Mm. I don't think it can be juxtaposition <laughs> with the current situation, but okay. it, it's very common. It's what we see a lot of in those fields of, in those communities of practice. And so I'm teaching, I'm not, just want to be very clear, I'm not teaching them to be yoga teachers, but I am teaching them principles of yoga and how to take that and use that to give short sequences of movement for their patients with low back pain. Mm -hmm. And that's a two-day course that I've developed and I'm running it for the third time. And guess what? This time I'm running it online. It's slightly terrifying because I've had to modify it and hope it works. Um, so I'm doing that uh, this coming Saturday and Sunday. And I am um, working to, be- to, to develop more courses like that for, what? yeah, a few more courses like that. So the, the one I've got in mind is I would like to, and I'm working towards um teaching yoga teachers to cue and adapt for the less able mm. and i don't i don't mean chair yoga right. i mean just to be able to because i think yoga teachers do have good observational skills sometimes not quite knowing how to use that so mm-hmm. you you know when you look at someone and you can see oh i can see you can't quite get into that or you look mm. at it and to 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 have the knowledge and the confidence a little bit of anatomy a little bit of physiology Amazing. Bit of awareness to be able to cue for alternative um uh postures or you know adaptation so i'm developing that will, will that be ready for next year i'm hoping so <laughs> so there's a, another question here because I'm, I'm genuinely very interested because as you were talking about what you're doing for the professionals introducing the yoga, I see, oh, is she going to do that in reverse? So amazing that you've thought of that. Mm-hmm. Is it quite a process to get the CPD approved? Is it through Yoga Alliance you had to have it approved? I don't know who I'm going to get that approved with. I mean, at the moment, I'm fortunate enough to be able to run that through the University College of Osteopathy. Of course, right, right. They'll okay. take me. Okay. <laughs> They've already yes. got me. Yes. Um, I'd love to see that, you know, um, I mean, I've got I've got lots of ideas around that, but it, it, it is a real passion of mine. I was saying mm. this to a patient today. She said to me, Oh, you know, when I do a uh, warrior two and I do a bit of a dress in a two, I can't hold my arms. And I said, well, why don't you not hold your arms? Why don't you just <laughs> do this instead? And she said, can I do that? And I said, well, yes, <laughs> yes. But she said, no one said that to me. And I said, oh, well, dear. you don't have to wait. Anyway, so we had this whole conversation and then I got on my soapbox and started rabbiting on. Her. So, um, yeah, and, and, and I recognise that it's because some people just don't always quite know or have the confidence or mm. have some of the backup knowledge. And I've got my, you know, those two hats on. So, and it goes a bit wider than that as well. Mm. It, go, it goes, yeah, but, but basically getting people to draw on their experience and mm. use that in action and use a bit of metacognition and think and do and, you know, get confident with doing that. So... Sign me up. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. Head I'll of the queue. You know. watch Please do. Face. Watch my Instagram page and, and it'll be up on there. Wonderful. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. And I've also got some ideas about doing courses with about the anatomy of asana. So not just pure. So basically what we would call in our trade functional anatomy. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. action. Yeah. So when you're doing let's use Virabhadrasana 2 again, what's happening at the shoulder girdles, what's happening at the pelvis, what's Amazing. happening, when we say alignment, what do we mean? And when we say your kneecap in line with your ankle. Over the ankle, what, yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah. What muscles are active? And also to move away from this very dry idea that you have your origin and your insertion of the muscle and it just does this because that 
you know, and to talk a bit about mm. So I've got that idea. Lord knows when that's going to come to fruition. Well, I think um, the head of marketing, Beck, will be watching and I'm sure she'll be knocking on your door because, you know, Moya go very good with, you know, upskilling the teachers and giving us education. So, yeah. Yeah. So those are my ideas, and Excellent. I've got to get through this two-day CPT I'm de delivering on or at the weekend via Zoom, which is a first. So it'll be amazing. You'll breeze through <laughs> it. You'll be fine. Everybody's quite forgiving of Zoom now. I you really know. But it's been know. it's been quite good. Touchwood. Um. So time for questions. Got the lovely Amanda and the lovely Tor. Don't be shy. Roll up if you have any questions. No pressure. Amanda smiling sweetly. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good question. Um, Any question, it doesn't have to be a good question. Who defines a good question? Any question is a question. Um, I guess the crossover between yoga and osteopathy and um, how, um, how do you find that you, um, sorry, lots of arms. Um, yeah. How do you find that you combine the two into your life, basically? It sounds pretty busy. What practice? <laughs> well, Yvonne saw the transformation. <laughs> she saw it's me amazing. the mirror. <laughs> yeah. That screen is hiding <laughs> oh so much. So on a practical level, so today is a good example. <laughs> no, Wednesday is a good, no, sorry, Thursday. My Thursday and Friday is a good example of how I do that in my life. So I teach a class on Zoom between 9.30 and 10.30. And the room looks pretty much exactly like this. And my mat goes there. And it's all very, the multitude of sins is hidden behind there. And then I've got exactly 25 minutes. <laughs> to change, okay. get my um, treatment table from behind there, plug it all in, get the pillows, lay out the paper towel in, go and change, put my mask on, put my visor on, put my plastic apron on, get my trolley of little bits and pieces ready to go, and da -da. And then on Thursday, I teach an evening class as well. So I, I have a sandwich, I have yoga, osteopathy, yoga, and then I do that order in the reverse. Amazing. So I, I've kind of learned to combine it quite well. And in, in, in when we were in real life, I, <laughs> I used to have exactly 25 minutes. So to you're used to it. The studio <laughs> I was teaching at, back home, quick change seeing patients. So I've kind of got used to combining it and it feels a really natural fit for me because the style of osteopathy that I do is quite, I don't, I do a lot of soft tissue work. I do a lot of exercise, AKA yoga prescription. I do a lot of use quite motivational interviewing type style to get people to look at a bit of discord that they have you know I want to do exercise I don't like exercise I want mm -hmm. to make changes I can't make change. you know that sort of thing um yeah so it, I, for me it blends really well and I've been sort of practicing it blending it for 20 years or whatever so it's just about <laughs> together amazing amazing any other questions I've just thought of one while well, you think of if there are any more. Otherwise, we can let you can go and have a lovely rest of the evening. While we've got you, I, you know, people may or may not realize that they recognize you from lots of the Yoga Matters promos. Yes. Tell us about how you got involved with Yoga Matters. Well, so. You know how I said lots of really good things happened with going to the Yoga in Healthcare Alliance conference? Yes. Yeah, so me and my little gobby self decided to go to the Yoga Matters stand and ask if, because I'd done a retreat in, I was very lucky, I did a retreat in um, Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. 
and I'd the, the teacher had shown a uh, use of a belt where it was sort of a little but a bit like the hold you use in the basana with the, the bind around the toes had put this belt around the toes and then it was around the ankle then that was brought up into um, oh, right. Japanese, yeah. and I thought oh that's good use of a belt so I went to ask them at their stand if they did a thinner belt a thinner longer belt right and I spoke to Candice and who I didn't know that was who she was at the time. And we had a little chat and she said, no, she didn't, but that was quite a good idea. And it turned out she was um, head of uh, developing products. Their, yeah, products. So that was that conversation. And then I cheekily said, oh, can I get a discount? And she said, yeah, I will email this person. So I did. And then out of the blue, about two months later, I got an email saying, I hope you don't mind us contacting you, but Candy spoke to you on the stand and she thought you were quite interested. I, I can't remember the wording, it's long as <laughs> possible. Um, and said, Would you be interested in, in doing a shoot? So that is how it happened. Amazing. How how long ago is this? So I did the first, the second shoot. I've done two shoots. I did the second one September last year. Okay. And the first one I did April last, oh, it must have been longer ago than that. The anyway. year before, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Lovely. So Lovely was, brand. It was a really happy happening and lots of nice things sprung from that. Mm, yeah. Run by a lovely lady, Twana. Yeah. Tor, do you have a question? <laughs> no, I never really have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, you, you turned your camera on. I thought you were getting ready to. Well, no, I thought I felt that basically I've been trying to like multitask and do some other stuff at the same time. But I, I thought there's only the four of us, so I thought I'd put my camera back on now that I've finished. Oh, that's nice. See <laughs> you. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Yinka, for sharing your journey. Thank it's you been a pleasure. Me. You're very welcome. Beautiful Thanks to for hear. Me. It's been a pleasure. So beautiful, varied journey and how you're combining them so looking out for your yeah. yoga cpd and all the best for this weekend yeah watch osteo yinka so, rather that's a yes yeah, so yeah good plugs i'm going to say um where can we find you on you instagram can find me so my osteopathic practice is homewood osteopathic practice and i've got a website and you can find me there you can find me at Osteo Yinka on Instagram, and I'm also hashtag the Osteopath Yogi on Instagram. So I have two, I can't make my mind up. I have two. <laughs> so, uh, okay. uh, I set the second one up in lockdown, so I thought I should have one. Um, okay. But I, I, and I look at both, but I'm mainly um, Osteo Yinka. Okay, lovely. So you Thank you so, so very much. And at the and... University College of Osteopathy as well. Okay. Wonderful. So normally these yoga journeys are fortnightly, but next week there is a special edition. So mm -hmm. Monday, the 26th of November. And the special edition is with the CEO himself of More Yoga, Shamia Sidhu. So really excited to be interviewing Shamia next week. So I hope everybody can tune in. That will be interesting. And yeah. So thanks again to Yinka. Thank Have a good evening. Thank and thanks guys for tuning in. Lovely to see you, Tor and Amanda. Take care. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank You're very you. welcome. Thanks Take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.